Hey y'all, welcome back to another hunting ammo ballistics gel test. Today we're going back to the big dogs. I've got the Barnes 400 grain original flat nose in 4570. And here's your box for that Barnes Pioneer 400 grain original flat nose for the 4570 government. Let's flip it around to the back. Here's a little bit of promo information. Feel free to stop, pause, and read all that if you would like to. Flipping it around to the side, something I like about Barnes Ammo, at least this Pioneer line, they have barrel length annotated with velocity. So 18 inch barrel, we're looking at 1595, 24 inch, 1715. And something to note, we've got a six inch barrel length difference. And we're only looking at 120 feet per second change between 18 and 24. The 4570 government cartridge is not super sensitive to barrel length. Just something to note, it is not an overbore cartridge. It is a very underbore cartridge. Go look that up if you need to know what that means. I'll explain later if I remember. But we will be shooting these out of the 16 inch barreled Marlin 1895 Trapper. So it'll be interesting to see how close we get to that 1595. Let's go ahead and yank these out and take a look. If I can get this box open, here we go. Something to note, it looks like Barnes is using brand new, just beautiful Starline brass. So very high quality brass if you're into reloading and stuff like that. And there it is, there's your big heavy hitter, big old flat nose lead tip bullet. Let's go shoot it and see how it does. And the test rifle today is my Marlin 1895 Trapper. It has a 16 inch barrel up top. I've got a Leopold VX3i one and a half to five power scope. And bringing up the rear, of course, I have one of my Mason leather cartridge cuffs. I've got 4570 stamped right in. Check out my website, masonleather.com. I would absolutely love to make you one. And coming over to the other side, I've got to show you, I've got my wild boar design. And real quick, if you're watching this video anytime around when it came out, I'm having a huge sale on my website, masonleather.com. Go check it out and get yourself something. We'll be taking three shots from 100 yards, firing into 10% ballistics gel that has been calibrated to meet the FBI's ballistics testing protocol. And while ballistics gel isn't an exact proxy for big game, it does provide a repeatable medium through which to test various bullets and ammo against each other. After the shots, we'll examine bullet expansion, weight retention, penetration, and velocity. My goal is to provide hunters like you and I with the most objective information possible to help us make the best choice for our particular hunting situation. The ballistics gel in this video has been sourced from Clear Ballistics. You can find a link in the description. So let's go ahead and shoot it. And here is the one velocity for that Barnes Pioneer 400 grain original flat nose load in 4570. I had some technical difficulties. I couldn't get the velocity to register. So we're just gonna have to go with this one velocity. I was able to measure 1510. This is not a reflection of the ammo. It's a reflection of technical difficulties that sometimes happen. And we are down at the blocks after shooting that Barnes Pioneer 400 grain original flat nose stuff. And penetration is the name of the game. We did capture all three bullets. They're down here in the third block. This block has some bubbles in it that does not harm the performance of it. It does make it a little bit more difficult to see the bullets though. We've got one that is way down right there at 36 inches. We've got another right here. We'll give that 39 and a half inches. And then this one is about the same, right about the 39 and a half inch mark. Deep, deep penetration out of these 400 grain bullets. And it looks like this one turned itself around in the block. It looks like this one maintained its direction of travel. And I can't quite tell for the other one. It's way down in there. Of course, we'll look at them here in a second. And coming on down to the first block, we'll take a look at the wound cavities. Now there's a little bit of a caveat. One of the shots knocked the block off the table. And when I picked it back up to put it up, um, I flipped it around. So we actually have entry this way for two of the shots and entry this way for one of the shots, but they're about the same. So we'll go ahead and just take a look at this one. And it looks like we start to get some expansion of the cavity by about one inch and it expands out expands out and then starts to taper off and by about eh, the nine inch mark eight to nine inch mark it is done with that and then just penetrates on through so you know not massive wound cavities these kind of bullets i wouldn't expect it they did exactly what i thought they would which is go deep let's go ahead and dig them out and take a look all right y'all we shot it let's talk about it the barnes pioneer 400 grain original flat nose out of the 45 7 
70 weight retention wise 399 399 and 400 grains for an average of about 399 grains retained weight that's essentially 100 percent weight retention which is about what you see with these heavyweight 4570 bullets. Expansion wise, not a whole heck of a lot, and I wouldn't expect there to be a whole heck of a lot, but we did get some 0.72 inches, 0.73 inches, and 0.75 inches for an average of about 0.73 inches expanded diameter. That's 1.6x expansion, which for you know a 400, 405 grain soft point 4570 bullet is pretty darn good. I think these bullets are very well designed for their intended purpose. They're not too hard, they're not too soft. And velocity wise, a little bit of a caveat here, I only got one velocity to register, so I mean that's what we're going to have to use, and that came in at 1511 feet per second. And the issue I think is my Garmin chronograph, when you set it up, you pick between, you pick one of two velocity ranges. And I think the speed of these bullets was kind of right there close to the interim of those ranges to where it was kind of confusing the chronograph or something. I don't really know. So, you know, don't, don't hate the messenger or anything like that. I tried shooting these through the lower velocity setting and also through the higher velocity setting. And it, it, it was missing them on both for some reason. So really, I think it's just sort of a fluke where these bullets are going sort of the exact speed where the chronograph has a hard time picking them up. It needs to be going either faster or slower. It is what it is. Sometimes stuff like this is going to happen. And interestingly, this is the only ammo where I've had that issue. And it's not an issue with the ammo. It's, it's just a quirk of the velocity that it's going, I think. Nevertheless, we got 1,511 feet per second for the velocity of record versus the factory build velocity out of an 18-inch barrel of 1,595 feet per second. So we came in 84 feet per second slower than box spec, but keep in mind, we got two less inches of barrel to work with. So if we had two more inches of barrel, we would need to make up 42 feet per second per inch to hit that box spec, which isn't totally out of the realm of possibility. I'm not sure you're gonna get that with 4570, but maybe. All in all, I'm pretty darn happy with the velocity. It's a lot better than a lot of other loads I've tested. And our estimated velocity at impact down there at 100 yards is 1,315 feet per second. Just something to know. And on to penetration, this load did excellent here and I wouldn't expect anything less. 36 inches, 39 and a half inches, and 39 and a half inches for an average of about 38 and a half inches of penetration. If you need a 4570 load that's gonna expand some and still punch really deep, this is a great option. And kinetic energy wise, with a 400 grain bullet going on average 1,511 feet per second, we're looking at 2,027 foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle and about 1,535 foot-pounds down there at 100 yards. And a quick announcement before we get to my final thoughts, if you'd like early access to my videos weeks and even months in advance of everyone else, become a channel member. The links will be in the video description and the pinned comment. Thanks, y'all. All right, y'all, it's time for my final thoughts on this Barnes Pioneer 400 grain original flat nose load for the 4570. I think it did excellent across the board. I was very surprised to see how much it actually did expand. You usually don't see that with those 400, 405 grain 4570 loads. They tend to just sort of flatten out at the front, and not actually expand much. These, we actually have some expansion and it was very uniform, making a nice big hole to punch on through. And these things went really deep, which is what I'm looking for with a you know, 400, 405 grain load out of a 4570. All in all, I think these did exactly what they're supposed to do, and I wouldn't hesitate to use them on you know, medium, medium, large, even large game. I think these are a good option. Anything where you need to go nice and deep and make a nice big hole. If you've used this load on game, let me and everyone else know in the comments how it did for you. And check out my website, masonleather.com, and get yourself some leather gear handmade by me just for you. I've been handcrafting leather gear for hunters for over a decade, and I would love to make you something. And there are hundreds of reviews on my website, so you can see what real hunters have to say about their mason leather gear. And also, tons of photos showing all the customizable options, including name, initial, and caliber stamping, as well as wild game designs and more. Everything is handmade by me right here in the USA. I would love to be a part of your hunt through my leather gear. And it helps support this channel, so I can bring you more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests. And lots of other cool stuff in the future. The link will be in the video description and the pinned comment, or you can just type masonleather.com into your web browser. And click one of these cards for more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests.